Hey, what's up guys? Just gonna do a short guide video today, educating some people on how to build a team in case you're still not sure on how you should build your team, who goes with who, yada yada. Just some very like simple things you can think about when building a team to take into consideration to make it easier for you to team build for simulated universe or any other content you're going to challenge in the game. Now, the first thing that might come to your mind when you're building a team is, oh my God, this character does this much damage. I want this character to do this. Listen, as important as it is to pick a DPS character, it is equally as important to pick a support and a tank character when building a team or just in general, a support character. A tank could count as a support really as well. So just, you need supports in any turn-based RPG for your DPS. Your DPS are nothing without your supports. They need the backup. So let's say I was building a team around Sela, for example, right? I'm like, oh, she's a single target DPS. I've read her skills. What does she do? Based on her talent and her uh, ult and her skill, she eats turns. I could build a team around her, right? Now, for example, a character like Sela, there's two obvious comps you could make, like just general comps. You don't need specific characters, just general type of comps you could make around a single target DPS character, right? And that is we could run a debuffer or a buffer to beef her up. So Pila, for example, lowers defense and Aster increases attack, right? So let's say I throw Aster in there. Okay, that's fine. But now these two are kind of squishy, right? So now we need someone for sustain. So that could be either a tank or Fire MC. Obviously, this isn't Fire MC right now. I haven't swapped, but Fire MC. Let's pretend she's Fire MC. You could run Fire MC or you could run Japard or you could run March. And March later on, I believe, uh, it might be an Adolon. Actually, let's double check that. We're gonna double check that right now. I think it's a trace later on. Bear with me. Here we go. She gets a cleanse on her shield. So not only is March a really good tank that you could run with like your sealer, you could throw her in there and now you have a cleanser as well, right? And because she's a cleanser, this means you might not actually need a healer because she's gonna throw a shield on sealer and she can freeze. She's a character that can freeze quite often if you get, have her with good energy, recharge and all that stuff. And so your fourth slot could either be a healer or you could run a sub DPS. A sub DPS could be anything like an AOE DPS or you could run another buffer slash debuffer and have uh, Sela, I almost said healer, on some crazy like hyper carry shit, right? But then you look at your comp again and you're like, okay, so I could run March on the preservation, or in this case, you could just run a healer, right? So there's two types of team comps. You got your hyper carry team comp and a sub DPS team comp. A sub DPS team comp would look something like you get rid of Pila and we throw in, for example, Savar. Now we got a buffer, a healer, a main DPS, single target, and a sub DPS AOE DPS uh, AOE target, right? And there you go, that's another type of team comp. Or you can even run just a full flat out. This is very generic, but it, it freaking works. It works even in the late game is main DPS sealer, a buffer or debuffer, a healer or a tank. So you've got two support, three supports technically, but Ast is also really good for breaking gauge. So she, you could consider her a sub DPS since she's really good at breaking fire gauge, but realistically this would be a hyper carry sealer team because your only big damage dealer here is sealer. So that's like three sort of obvious comps you could run with her. You could run her with a tank, and a full on hyper carry, a healer and a tank and a hyper carry, or you could run her with a healer or a tank and a sub DPS. Or if you really wanted to, if you feel like you didn't need the buffs, which I wouldn't recommend, unless you're doing like content that you know you can solo and like auto or something, right? If you're gonna auto content that you know is easy to auto, you could run two DPSs. You could run a main DPS, a sub DPS and a healer or a tank without any buffers. But I really wouldn't recommend not running a buffer. Asta, Bronya, Pila, and uh, what's her name? Ting Yun, I don't have her. It's the only character I'm missing, I really wanna. Um, those are all good characters that could run as your buffer or debuffer as slash your DPS support for your sealer. And that's just something I always take into consideration. Also, positioning this is actually really important. So you'll notice I specifically put Japard here at the end and I put March here, right? I did that on purpose to see if anyone would catch that. If he didn't, so for example, if I put March here, right? Now remember, the thing about tanks as well is a lot of tanks like taunt, like March, I believe, whoever she puts her shield on, they have a higher chance of getting attacked, right? So that she can do her counter. So let's say she puts the shield on herself, and I've put her right here. 
If she gets hit by an AoE move like that hits anyone adjacent to her, it's going to hit Aster. We don't want that to happen. That's not what you want to happen. So positioning is very, very important when it comes to team comps as well. That's why we put Natasha there instead. For example, Japard. He's going to be taunting naturally with his uh, Trace's skills if you got the extra shit. He's going to be taunting. And he's going to be, and being a preservation character, he's naturally going to have extra aggro on him as well. Um, so he's going to be getting hit a lot. And if you run him at the end here with a character with Natasha, who's got high HP, if he gets hit by an AoE that hits adjacent enemies instead of a room-wide AoE, Natasha's going to be fine and dandy. She's going to be absolutely fine and dandy because she's going to be sitting at a lot of max HP and she's going to heal up anyway. And it saves your DPS from getting hit and it saves your support from getting hit. Now, you could run this the opposite way. You could run tank, healer, support, DPS. But more naturally or not, if you're going to run a hyper carry one dps team i would really recommend keeping your dps as far away as possible from your tank character because it just makes sense and that is it guys it was just a very short guide today to help you with team composition if you're not too knowledgeable or if you be thinking a bit too much and overthinking about your team comps it's honestly not as difficult as it seems but positioning is also very important so do keep that into account when creating your team comps Thank you for making it to this part in the video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.